I hope you're all staying safe and well at home and you've been keeping busy with your home learning. Today we are going to be writing a fictional story together. So remember, fictional means that it is made up, it's not about real life. So to plan and write our story and to be successful, we need to do these few things here. So you need to make sure you have included an opening, build up, problem and resolution paragraph. You are going to use some coordinating conjunctions, and we'll talk about those in a moment. You're going to write in the past tense. You'll use a range of sentence openers, and you'll have included lots of description to make your story exciting. Before we start, please pause the video and make sure you have got a pencil, some paper, and you've got your thinking caps on and you are ready to learn. Brilliant, well done. So we're going to start our session with some spellings and these are our year two spelling words. So I'm going to read the sentence and then say the word that is missing and you need to just write down the missing word. So number one, Jess told Max that it was her birthday yesterday. Told. Jess told Max that it was her birthday yesterday. Number two, would you like a banana? Would. Would you like a banana? Number three. There was a mouse behind the haystack. Behind. There was a mouse behind the haystack. Number four. The children love singing and dancing. Children. The children love singing and dancing. Number five. Mrs. Twit has a glass eye. Eye. Mrs. Twit has a glass eye. Number six. Last year, Sam went on holiday. Last. Last year, Sam went on holiday. Number seven. I spent a lot of money on my mum's Christmas present. Money. I spent a lot of money on my mum's Christmas present. And number eight, it took an hour to travel to the beach. Hour. It took an hour to travel to the beach. Okay, let's have a look at the answers. So number one, Jess told Max that it was her birthday yesterday. You can give yourself a tick if you got it right. And if you made any mistakes, just correct it with your pencil. Number two, would you like a banana? Number three, there was a mouse behind the haystack. Number four, the children love singing and dancing. Number five, Mrs. Twit has a glass eye. Number six, last year Sam went on holiday. Number seven, I spent a lot of money on my mum's Christmas present. And number eight, it took an hour to travel to the beach. So if you got any of those wrong, don't worry, just make a note of them and they can be words that you keep practicing during your time at home. So today we are going to try really hard to include some coordinating conjunctions in our stories. Last week we spoke about a different type of conjunction called a subordinating conjunction. Today the conjunction that we are going to use joins two simple sentences together to make a longer sentence. And it is important to vary your sentence lengths when you are writing so that your writing is more exciting and engaging for the reader. So you can use a coordinating conjunction to join together two simple sentences. Today we are going to focus on the conjunctions and, or, but and so. So, which coordinating conjunction fits best in this sentence? I don't want to do my homework tonight. Mum says I have to. Which coordinating conjunction? Read through the sentence and in the gap replace each of the conjunctions and decide which one sounds best. I don't want to do my homework tonight and Mum says I have to. I don't want to do my homework tonight but Mum says I have to. I don't want to do my homework tonight or Mum says I have to. I don't want to do my homework tonight so, Mum says I have to, which conjunction sounds best? I think it is but. Let's have a look. I don't want to do my homework tonight, but Mum says I have to. 
Well done if you thought the same. In art class, I like to paint. Jane likes to draw. Work out which conjunction sounds best in the sentence. And, but, so, or, or. Okay, in art class, I like to paint. And, Jane likes to draw. Well done if you thought it was and. I'm going to music lessons. I can learn the piano. So we have our two simple sentences that make sense on their own and we need to choose which conjunction we can use to join them together. I'm going to music lessons. I can learn the piano. Which conjunction sounds best? I'm going to music lessons. So I can learn the piano. Well done if you thought it was so. Do you want to go now? Should we go later? So here are our two simple sentences. We need to decide which conjunction, which coordinating conjunction can be used to join them together. Do you want to go now? Or should we go later? Well done if you thought it was or. Tom's favourite sport is tennis. Amina's is ice skating. Which conjunction can be used to join the two simple sentences together? Which one fits best? Sometimes there might be two conjunctions that sound okay, but you need to choose the one that makes the most sense. Tom's favourite sport is tennis and Amina's is ice skating. Let's have a look. Okay, well done if you thought it was and. So we are also going to be making sure when we write our stories today that we are writing in the past tense because we are writing about something that has happened already. It's in the past. To do this we need to know what a verb is. So can you pause the video and tell someone that is at home with you what a verb is? Okay, well done. So a verb is a doing word. It is a word that describes an action. And when we are writing in the past tense we will be using a verb that shows that the action has already been done. So the tense of a verb tells us the time when an action took place. And a past tense verb usually ends in ed. So it ends in the suffix ed. Let's have a look. So here I have got my root word jump. And in the present tense that could be Jack is jumping. But yesterday Jack what did he do? He wasn't jumping. Yesterday, Jack jumped. We have added the ed suffix onto the end of the root word. Here is our second example. Bark is our root word. And in the present tense, the dog is barking. But in the past tense, so it's something that's already happened. Last night, the dog filled the gap. Last night, the dog barked. So we just need to add the ed onto the end of our root word. So today we are going to be writing a story about a meerkat family. I have got a video clip that I would like you to watch and whilst you are watching that clip you are going to write some notes in your planning table and I sent a copy of this to your parents last week so they can have a look on their email and you can draw it out and you're going to try and think about these questions at each point of the story and write some notes down to help you plan your story. So in your opening paragraph, where did the meerkat family live and what were their names? You can think about how you can describe them, use some really brilliant adjectives, include some expanded noun phrases, maybe some similes. In the build up paragraph, you're going to then think about these questions. Why is the pomegranate so special? How do the meerkats look after it? Who do the meerkats see looking at the pomegranate? And then during the problem section, so your next paragraph, why does the vulture steal the pomegranate? Can you think of a really imaginative way, reason for the, uh, the vulture stealing the pomegranate? And then finally your resolution, so your ending paragraph, how do the meerkats save their fruit? And then what happens at the end? I want you to think about some really brilliant adjectives, 
some really brilliant reasons why the things are happening in the story when you're watching the clip and you are going to write these ideas down into your planning table. You also have got some space to write down some vocabulary ideas and sentence openers that you might want to use at each point. And again, look at the word mats that we've sent to your parents or your adults and you can borrow some ideas from those word mats.
here is a plan that I have started to create and I have used my alternative adjective word mat and my sentence opener word mat to help me choose some different vocabulary to make it really interesting. So I've started with my opening paragraph plan. Remember your opening paragraph sets the scene for the reader. It tells them where the story is set and who the characters are and what they are doing at the beginning of the story. So in our story, the meerkats were sleeping in their dark, peaceful burrow. I have written down an expanded noun phrase to describe their burrow. And the story is set in the grasslands of South Africa. So I have just written a few notes to help me think about what is happening in that opening paragraph. So Max the meerkat, I've given him a name. Max the meerkat was on guard, protecting the special fruit. And the red juicy pomegranate was being saved to eat at Max's birthday party. I have also included some vocabulary and sentence opener ideas in my bottom box. So I'm going to start my story with in a far off land. And later on in my opening paragraph, I'm going to use the sentence opener meanwhile. In my next paragraph, the build up, this is where you are creating the tension. You are telling the reader what the characters are doing and what is about to happen. You're setting the scene for the problem. You're telling them how the characters are feeling and what the characters are doing at that point. So in our story, the meerkat family woke up and they ventured out of their burrow. Remember, we're writing in the past tense, so our verbs usually will end with an ed. So they ventured out of the burrow. They stealthily climbed the tree to admire their special shiny fruit. They clambered down and back onto the hot, dry sand. They glanced up and they gasped in shock when they saw the vulture flying over. And the vulture was as evil as a witch. I've used a simile to describe how evil the vulture was. So in the problem paragraph, this is where you tell the reader what is happening and what the main issue is. So in our story, the main issue was that the evil vulture stole the meerkat's special fruit. I said that he used his spiky sharp talon to slice the stalk of the pomegranate and to take the fruit off of the tree. Then the meerkats chased the vulture, but at first they couldn't reach the fruit. So they quickly devised a plan to save their special fruit. Remember, we are writing in the past tense, so remember the ed suffix on the end of your verbs. Now, the ending, I have left that one up to you to plan. I have added a couple of sentence openers that you might want to think about, so eventually and in the end. But you need to watch the clip and think about what happens at the end of the story. How is the whole problem resolved? Do the meerkats get their fruit back? Are they happy? What happened at the end? Okay, so now you have written your plan and you have watched the clip, you are going to write an exciting story about the marvellous meerkat family trying to save their special fruit that was stolen by the, the vulture. You need to remember to include an opening, build up, problem and resolution paragraph. So your story should have four sections. You need to include some conjunctions. Remember they were the conjunctions and, or, but and so. You're going to write in the past tense, so most of your verbs will end with ed. You're going to use a range of sentence openers, remember to have a look at the word map that you were emailed. You're going to include lots of description, so remember expanded noun phrases and similes. And you're going to remember your capital letters and full stops. Please then send your stories on to either myself or Miss Smith, and we're really looking forward to reading about your meerkats what happened to them. Thank you for watching today and I look forward to talking and seeing you all soon.